Okay. Um, Roomba, shut up. I'm gonna put a disclaimer on this before I even walk out the door. I'm heading to the Bellagio. I'm gonna to try to jump into a 510 game. But, I haven't played poker in almost two weeks. Besides maybe 200 hands online, which is nothing. So, I'm gonna be rusty. Some of the hands you might see might be um, rough. Be nice. I'm a person with feelings. So take it easy. And wish me luck, cause <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen. <sighs> and you, you need to shut your mouth while I'm doing the intro. You heard me doing the intro, rude. You'd think because the F1 is over, the traffic would be better. You'd be wrong. I'm on a mission to get it. Gonna question you with us, you whistle, you whistle. I'm in a push in the limits. Better finish the race. Who's watching the minutes? Sharp as a razor with it. Feeling a rage, you know what it takes. Even though it had only been a couple weeks without live play, I felt super rusty sitting down at Bellagio 510. I did run a little good in the fact that this table had no real threats in the form of super competent pros on it. This means I was maybe going to be able to get away with some shenanigans if push came to shove. The night begins with the straddle being on and me opening $50 from the cutoff with seven five of hearts. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, and the straddler calls. Four ways. Nine of diamonds, six of clubs, seven of clubs. This isn't a bad flop after opening with seven five. I immediately begin thinking about how I'm going to attack this board, which is pretty good for my actual hand, but kind of meh for my range. For instance, would pocket jacks love this flop? What would I do with king queen of diamonds here? But as I'm thinking, I notice the small blind is gathering chips. He proceeds to then donk $170 into the field. The big blind calls pretty quickly and the straddler folds. What in the world is this? I call with my pair and gutter, but I'm not happy about it. Especially since my gutter isn't clean. In hindsight, I probably should have just folded with no heart on this board. The turn brings a three of diamonds and the small blind continues. $400. The big blind tanks, then raises to $1,000. Yeah, I'm done with this. Fold. The small blind calls the 1K. The river queen of clubs completes the front door flush draw and the small blind leads again. He bets enough to cover the big blind who is sitting with about $2,000 left. The big blind tanks again and finds the call. The hands are revealed. The small blind tables jack nine of clubs for a flopped top pair that river to flush and the big blind tables 10 eight of diamonds for a flop straight that turned a flush draw. Yeesh. A few more hands pass and the straddle is still on in this next one. The hijack opens to $50 and I look down at a very playable ace-queen offsuit on the button. I could go either way between raise and call here. I decide to just slide in the call, the big blind joins, and the three of us head to the flop. Nine do six with two spades. Both players check to me and I don't really have much going on with this flop. I have two overs and I'm holding the ace of spades, but I have no real reason to bet. So I check it back. The turn pairs the six and the big blind leads out for a pretty large size, $120. When the hijack folds, I just let this one go as well. I've won a few inconsequential pots, but so far, not really getting anything going in this game. About 10 minutes later, again with the straddle on, I look down at pocket queens in the big blind. The button opens to $50, the small blind folds, and I three bet to $240. Maybe I could have gone a little bigger, but whatever, 240 is fine. The button is my only call. All I know about the button is that he's a recreational player. He likes to call, doesn't raise much, and he's on the slightly tighter side. 
not a maniac. So when the flop comes 10-10 king with two clubs, I'm not jumping for joy. I figure I'm ahead of a lot of his hands, but the king is worrisome. I check, he checks it back. The same action on the five of spades turn. Check, check. The river seven of diamonds should be a blank as well. I go for some thin value here with a small bet, $160, looking to get maybe heroed by pocket jacks specifically. That doesn't happen. What happens is that he super snap raises me to $500. Easy fold. He doesn't show, but he tells me that he had a king. That tracks. Nice hand, sir. I figured as much. Dealers change, everyone pays their $7 time break, and the next hand begins with the low jack opening to $40, the cutoff calling, the button calling, and me looking down at pocket queens once more. Again, I three bet. This time, my $220 bet gets through. Everyone folds. Pretty quickly after this hand, I got a text message about an event happening at Mandalay Bay. So I colored up my chips, shoved them in my pocket, and I headed out. Okay, we picked up from the game at the Bellagio pretty quickly. I think I was only there like an hour or so. Quick stats on that game, maybe two hours. Um, in for 2,500, out for like 23 something. So down a little less than $200, but something else came up. I'm going to run to Mandalay Bay and I don't know, maybe we'll pick up the session after the Mandalay Bay thing. Or something instead. I've actually That's a very bad analogy, but I just had to think of something else. <laughs> I've actually never been here to retro this actually. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna check it out for a little bit and then you know me, we're getting right back into a cash game. No one can bring me down because I'm high above the clouds. I'm floating in blue and feeling brand new. Got a smile on my face that I just can't erase. Everybody knows wherever I go, I'm a happy soul. All day long I'm smiling, I'm happy all the time. This, like many other nights, have come to an end. We, God, it is time to get out of here, it's time to go. I'm telling these guys I'm going home, but we're really going to the Bellagio. You know how it works, isn't it? I'm a happy soul. We are back to the Bellagio. Let's see um, if we can make this happen and get the uh, two hundred dollars that we left here back. Trying to get the video. Trying to get the video. For me, I'm taking it easy. Got a smile on my face that I just can't erase. Everybody knows wherever I go. So day long I'm smiling, I'm happy all the time. That sun keeps on shining, it's got 
So we're now back to battling at the Bellagio and the second half of the session is going much like the first half. In other words, not a lot is going on. Win a little, lose a little, and that's about it. Here I raised the $40 from the cutoff with Ace Jack suited over an under the gun limp. The button next to act then raises to $120 and the limper folds. I'm not really mixing in four bets with Ace Jack suited, so I call the additional $80 and we see a flop. Ace 9 4 with two diamonds. So I flop top pair, decent kicker, but I don't have the betting lead, and this isn't a board that I donk. Check. The button continues, as I would expect most to on this board with a $60 bet. Easy call. The turn five of spades puts two spades on board. Check. The button sizes up with his bet this time, $270. Weird spot. Our hand is too strong to fold, but not nearly strong enough to check raise. I call again. The river king of spades brings in the backdoor flush and I check, and again, the button puts a lot of chips in the middle. $640. Although the front door diamonds missed, there are just too many other factors for me to call here profitably. He could just have a better ace, or he could have backdoored a flush. And not to mention, this betting line with these sizes isn't typical of a bluff. Could be, but normally isn't. I fold. Next hand, the low jack opens to $30, and I have another playable one. King Jack of Spades. I raise to $100, and he calls. So we're heads up. Queen Jack 6 with two hearts. He checks, and I check it behind. The turn this time is a beauty. It's the Ten of Diamonds. Our villain checks. Now he's kind of a bit screwed. Yes, the turn improves me slightly by adding a straight draw to my hand, but it also smacks my range pretty hard. Ace-King is in my range, but most of his Ace-King holdings would have 4-bet preflop. So what's he going to do here if I just start showering bets at him? It's going to be really hard for him to continue. Knowing this, I bet almost full pot, $200. He insta-folds. Most of the spots I got into this session were pretty standard ones, like here. Button opens to 30, and I defend the big blind with ace-4 offsuit. Eight of diamonds, ace of hearts, queen of clubs. I check. He bets small, $20. I call. Three of spades. I check. He sizes up here a little bit on this card that doesn't connect with the flop. $120. I have an ace. I call. Seven of clubs. I check again, and he checks it back, and he wins with a better ace. Standard. I'm not really folding any street, and he's not really getting called by worse on the river. He just gets to win with the best hand. This next hand under the gun has limped. The low jack has raised to $40, and since we are pretty deep, I just flat with pocket eights in the cutoff. The button, well, he has different plans and raises, but it's small. He makes it $120 to go. The limper folds, but at this size, it allows both the low jack and myself to come along. Three ways. Three, seven, five with two diamonds. Low jack checks, I check, button checks. Six of diamonds, low jack checks, and I debate on betting, but decide to check. The button checks again. The river pairs the five, and now the low jack leads out for $300. 
$300. Does this feel like a bluff to you? Yeah, me neither. I fold in the button folds. Sometimes, quite often actually, sessions just kind of go nowhere, especially when they're like of the three to four hour variety. Hell, I've had sessions where I didn't get playable hands for hours. It's not that rare. Okay, okay, abbreviated session. We tried to make that thing work. But as you saw, we were sitting in the middle of the table, the game was garbage, and it's already kind of late. So we just decided to donate another $200 to them and go home. But guess what? We will um, be back. I guarantee it. We'll be back. So if you like the vlogs, like the vlogs, subscribe, leave me a comment. And um, I'll probably respond. Probably. Until then, and then is most likely tomorrow. I'll catch you later. Okay, normally when I say that little spiel, the vlog is like over, that's it. But today, we give you some more thoughts. That game I was in, the second game, after uh, Mandalay Bay, not the first one, was kind of um, garbage. That's, that's the main reason I'm leaving, is the game was garbage, not necessarily because I was in a shitty seat, although I was in a shitty seat. So, I'm a little frustrated, and you guys are going to hear about it. So we are looking forward to battling again tomorrow because I wasn't as rusty as I thought I'd be. Let's go. Private eyes, they're watching you. But I forgot to do my vlog opening, so I'm going to do it right here in front of the Bellagio. I ain't tripping, this is easy. Easy, got them excited to meet me. Meet me. This is my mid session update face. Like, I don't. I don't know what's going on in that game. They're doing some wacky shit in my game. I got diamonds, you got CZs. CZs, wake up, get to it, and repeat. Repeat. Should have just folded it. Oh, but. You realize how much easier this game would be if you really, like, truly believed that, like, everything bad that happened was the dealer's fault? The game, like I said in the mid session update, was kind of. I won't kind of. I won't kind of. Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs> Not that many. Near perfect. Okay. Roomba, shut up. Alexa, tell Roomba to pause. Roomba, shut up. All right, we're here at Mandalay Bay. We're on the search for the reason we came here. God damn that light. <laughs> we're here at Mandalay Bay and there's a reason we came here and we're on the search for those two people and we just happened to find Vanessa. It's like, I don't know, it's like. Like many other nights have come to an end. We, God, it is time to get out of here. It's time to go. I'm telling these guys I'm going home, but we're really going to the Bellagio. You know how we do it. Isn't it? Maybe I'm just a dead man walking.